This is a Tannis airless tire, and I'm gonna put this on my trike. But it's not just a trike, it's an e-trike. And I'm only putting one on, so stay tuned to find out why I am doing this. So why the Tannis airless tire? And well, I gotta give you a little background first. This trike, I rebuilt this trike, bought it used, built it in 2021, I think it was April. Rebuilt everything, there's nothing original on it except for the seat in the frame. And I went through a journey on tires. I had first started with this when the original tires were flat. This was my Schwabi Marathon Plus, and it is a 35 by 406, 20 by 135 tire. It's made to be no puncture. It has an inner tube right there, inner tube. Schwabi Big Ben Plus, and this is a a 55 by 406, 20 by 2.15 tire, also with a big fat inner tube. And I got it because I didn't like feeling the seams in the sidewalk as I rode along. And as you can see, it's quite big. I still have them on the front tires, but it didn't quite fit the rear tire. I had to under inflate this just so it wouldn't hit the frame and some screws that held the fender on. So that was like not great for the rear. So then back to why the Tannis. So this Tannis tire is going to go only on the rear. And the reason is I got this Falco hub motor here. And as you can see, I've got an axle bolt. I got a torsion arm bolt. I got all these cables wired up in there. And for me to change this in a hot Florida day, maybe it's 90 degrees out, really humid. That's really going to be a bear. It's going to take me probably 45 minutes to an hour to take this off fix the tube, put it back on, and then rest in a shady spot. In addition to that, I gotta bring all these extra tools. Two 20 inch inner tubes. I bring two 10 millimeter wrenches for the torque arm to remove that. I bring a 19 inch, 19 inch, 19 millimeter wrench to get the axles off on each side. I gotta bring a bunch of zip ties to squeeze the tire down so I can get it on and off. And I gotta bring some nail clippers to cut them off when I'm done. And then I can inflate the tire. You see, that's a lot of weight. It's a lot of work. So much easier if I just simply put a tire on there that can't go flat. And that's why we're doing this on this particular track. By the way, if I were to have a mid-drive in the front, I probably wouldn't have that problem because I could use a quick release or whatever I have in the back to just drop the tire out, fix it, put it back on. But with a hub motor, that's just not an option. So we're going to give this a shot. But first, let's talk about why this tire, the pros and cons. Well, what is it? The Tannis airless tire, patented, made in Korea. 20 by 1.5, 4406, no puncture. Turn this way, tire, and notice there is no air valve. It is a solid tire. Well, it is a hard, closed-celled rubber tire. It's rated for 5,000 miles. It has not the most aggressive tread, and they say it takes about 75 miles to break it in. I am expecting a harsher ride with this, probably more akin to the 135 Marathon Plus. I also did some measurements comparing this tire to this tire with the inner tube. So this 135 Schwabi weighs in at 690 grams for this. You think this would be heavier? This weighs in at 575 grams. So that is a weight savings so we'll see about that the other thing about this is I mentioned the harsh ride I'm probably gonna be okay because I do have suspension on this trike and I'm hoping that'll absorb a lot of the uh, bumps and grinds that this is not going to uh, absorb cost wise it's about the same I had gotten it round like this because it was shipped in this box came twisted in a figure eight in this box you see it doesn't fit and it was all kind of mangled and that's normally how it comes. 
So I put it outside in the sun for a while. It softened up, put it on a cold tile floor. It evened itself out, and now we're ready to put it on. Okay, with that, it's getting really hot out here. It's January 2nd in Florida. It's January 2nd, 2023, so Happy New Year, everybody. This is my New Year's resolution to never have a flat on the rear tire of this trike. Let's go inside where it's nice, cool, and air-conditioned, and uh, we'll do this in my living room. Stay tuned. I'm going to resort to the zip tie method that I've been told about. Very, very tight. These pins are supposed to be sticking out. These pins are supposed to be like outward on one side to grab. And just double check the rotation. That's the rotation. That's the direction. Okay, and this is out on this side, so we have to grab on that side of the rim. Let's stretch it. Let's see how it's going to work for me. I'm going to start it. And zip it. Oh well, I'm just gonna go along. It's easy, wheel. This will be easy. Stretch a little bit. Don't want to break the tool. This is a beast. Everything's set up. Everything's done. I'm gonna stretch. This is very difficult to see it on. This is what they say. This is not working. I must say, this is the most difficult tire I have ever put on. Much harder than the Schwabi Marathon Pluses, which were a bear to get on. This is far tougher. So let me tell you what I did last night. I got the tire on the rim. I had to use this tool to basically put it underneath and keep wiggling it up to get that last three quarters on the rim. Meanwhile, using zip ties to secure it down so it didn't come off. I also then had to set several of these pins just to get the tire into the well deep enough that I could use this to wiggle the tire back on the rest of the way. And that was a huge relief to get that on. And I was really tired at that point. So then I continued on setting a few of the pins. It was exhausting. My shirt was soaked with sweat. It was about 7 p.m. My little pup put his head right here and looked at me with those little eyes and said, Daddy, it's time to stop. And that's why it's the next day. I listened to my dog. She was smarter than me. Anyway, so I have perfected my technique this morning. Um, a night's rest really made it a difference. So I'm going to show you what I do. So here's my technique for getting these pins in. Start with the needle nose pliers. Give it a little push in. Make sure that it's all the way in. 
make sure that the rubber is inside the rim. And then I'm going to take this with the tip that bends outward facing to the outside. Find the pin, set it on top. Stand up. Push it in towards my knees very hard. And give a twisting motion. Not that one didn't set. You can see it popped out a little bit. Sometimes it takes two attempts. Put it right back in. Do the same thing again. Push it in. in there. This one does not want to go. Push it. Gotta get it all the way in there. I can see the pins bending. Step. Did you hear that click? That went in. Try one more. Try my head. Make sure the pin's in there. Take your tip and push in. Scoop. Bend that pin. It looks like it's going to go in half. Give it a twist. And it's in there. Now, my other technique is have a cloth handy, and if you're like me, 63 with arthritis, have a nice warm pad to squeeze your hands in because they're going to hurt after two or three pins, and you got to give your, your fingers a break. So, I'm going to now continue to finish the rest. It'll take a while, and let's see if it's worth it. Well... I got the tire on and I noticed it wobbles a little bit when I put it on the truing stand. So I'm going to let the tire relax here in the backyard. It's a cloudy day, 80 degrees out, and I want to give this tire some sun and see if that'll help the rubber relax and uh, fit better. And then I'll go back to the truing stand with it. Well, here we are. The wheel is done. There were some surprises along the way. Uh, as you'll see, it is all well seated on both sides. And the surprise was, off camera, I, after I took the wheel off, I had put this on my truing stand and the rim and the motor was all true uh, horizontally and uh, vertically. But after I put the tire on, it wasn't anymore. It had pulled down, it was a little out of round, and had a small wobble to it. As I rotated, you could see it was moving back and forth. So I called uh, Tannis and I said, asked him about it, and the woman said, well, she never heard of that before, and she talked to one of her senior installers and said, it's not unheard of, it happens occasionally. So I had trued it, and now it's probably about 95% true. Um, I couldn't do, well, some of the spokes were about as tight as I cared to make them. So it's mostly true. I think the rim is a little out of round to compensate for the tire, but the tire is round. So with that, we're going to go put this back on the trike now and finish the job. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. This is my torque wrench. I've had a long time, so old. It's a Sears Craftsman. And I'm going to set this to 40 pounds because that is the recommended tightness for the axle bolts. There. Exactly 40 pounds. I feel that tight click. 
Okay, that's 40 pounds. Almost. Okay, that's 40 pounds of torque. We're all done. The tire is mounted. The wires are all reset. This trike is ready to ride with the new Tannis tire. So this was my first experience with the Tannis tire and I want to share some observations with you. First of all, who is this tire not for? Well, if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you don't have patience, this is not the tire for you because it requires a lot of patience. If you have a weak hand grip or bad arthritis, not the tire for you to install yourself because it is hard on the hands. If you have high blood pressure, you might consider not installing this tire yourself. It will definitely raise your blood pressure. Um, anyway, I recommend talking to your local bike shop if you're dead set on having one of these tires because they are very difficult to install. And one of the reasons it's so difficult for me is because this is a 20 inch tire. And I called Tannis today about this because they said, and they admitted, a 700 tire, say a 26 inch tire, is relatively easy to install if it's, you know, normal one inch tire. But when you get to a smaller tire and a wider tire, in my case, a 20 inch tire, that's 1.5 inches wide, it can be very, very difficult to install. And they said to me, they even have one more difficult, a 16 inch one uh, three quarter 1.75 inch tire that they say is incredibly difficult to install and they're going to be making a new video on it because it is a different animal than their larger tires that most upright bikes would use so that's my conclusions on this um, I don't know if I like it but we're gonna try it in the next video and we're back like magic here we are riding on the tennis airless tire this is my second uh time out riding i did a 45 minute ride yesterday with it and i'm on a fairly smooth road right now funny thing is yesterday when i rode on this very road the tire was noisy it's hard to explain but there was a weird noise but after 45 minutes riding on the trip home on the same road quiet and it's been quiet since so that's how it feels and watch this i'm going over a bump right now smooth the pneumatic 2.15 balloon tires in the front are doing great and the one and a half inch tire on the back is doing great and the shock absorber is sucking up all the roughness so I'm going to get on the sidewalk in a moment and we'll do a sidewalk seam test. We're riding on the sidewalk now and I got to say, I am not really feeling a difference between this and the Schwabi Marathon Plus. I barely feel the seams. The uh, 2.15 fat tire in the front absorbing the front bumps and the shock is probably doing a lot of the absorbing in the rear. So the um, Tannis airless tire really feels like the Schwabi Marathon. I'm not really feeling any difference there. So now I am in my favorite running path in the park. It is a fairly rough paved path and it really just feels like it did before. I gotta say, I am really surprised. Here's a bump, nothing. Here's a couple more bumps and then we're gonna go over some rough tree roots going over a branch it's really feels no difference okay here's the rough tree roots so smooth i love that i'm going to come back here now this is going to clip my pneumatic front i'm just surprised how nice it is and a few more bumps and jars here 
it's just a very smooth ride. I really can't complain about this. Okay, let's go around. Let's just ride. I mean, it just feels nice. I really cannot tell the difference between this and my Schwabi Marathon Plus. The rolling resistance really feels about the same. I'm not pedaling any harder. I'm still maintaining about 10 miles an hour, um, just as I did before, which is what I do on this path. Well, there's a lot of people here, as you'll see as we ride around. But it is a surprisingly comfortable tire. Okay, I'm gonna come back to the roots in a minute, and we're gonna do a, cl a close up and a slow motion drive by. Well, I'm gonna to have to finish this video up soon because it's already uh, 5.50 p.m. and the sun is setting. Uh, <laughs> GoPro's got great night vision. Here we're going over another bump. Soaks it up really nice. Here's a divot in the middle of the road. Barely feel it. So my conclusion again is this is a fantastic solution for an e-trike. You don't have to worry about changing the tire or getting a flat on the road. I have had anxiety. I think we call that um, tire anxiety or flat anxiety, that you're afraid that you're gonna get a flat when you're riding and it's just gonna be close to impossible to replace the uh, inner tube on an e-trike that's all bolted into place. Anyway, that's now a thing of the past. I can ride all day long now and my only concerns would be, well, the front tires are still Pumatic. They're Schwabi Big Ben Pluses. They're not likely to have a flat. Oh, here's a divot. And um, yeah, again, two thumbs up on the Tannis. Ooh, let's do that again. Two thumbs up on the Tannis airless tire for your trike. And again, if you're not a good do-it-yourselfer or you have arthritis in your hands or no patience hire your local bike shop to install this tire for you because you will be so unhappy trying to do it yourself it really is a bear in the 20 inch tire 26 maybe not so much but the 20 inch tire is really really difficult to put on Anyway, I'm Joel Eyecatcher. If you found this video or these videos helpful, please, please hit that subscribe button and that like bu button, <laughs> like button. So um, YouTube knows that this is a good video and they will recommend my channel to other people interested in trikes. Thanks very much. I'm Joel Eyecatcher. Bye.